Hey, my name's Justin, and this is The Art of Repair. If you have ever broken a device and gotten it repaired, or think maybe you'll do that at some point in your entire life, then you absolutely need to watch every second of this video because very shortly here, some decisions are gonna be made that are gonna basically take repair out of your hands forever. Okay, so I'm really glad you didn't click out because I'm gonna show you some pretty cool things with some data that I've kind of put together over a little bit of time now. And when you see the end results of this data and what it predicts, you are gonna be mad at Apple, at Samsung, at all these big companies who have been basically kind of pulling the wool over your eyes for a long time. And there are a lot of people in the technician, you know, the, the, the mobile electronics repair industry as a whole that have been just yelling at the top of their lungs but nobody is listening and I don't know what else to do so here we go um, I'm gonna show you guys a clip from a conference that I did back in February before the whole you know coronavirus really took hold super hard and in this little talk I'm gonna be talking about serialized encrypted parts and kind of the future based on the data that we see right now and then after I do that I'm gonna talk about it more in depth with an updated kind of graph with more updated information basically that comes till all the way this morning. So here we go. This is where we really get into what I wanna talk about today. On this list, I wouldn't say that this is like an end all list of the 10 most common repairs. Your store is gonna vary, you know, depending on if you're a level two store, if you're a level three store, or you know, if you're just a computer repair store, who knows, it's gonna vary. But you know, when you're working on the phones, I would say these are probably some of the, the top 10 you know, things that you're gonna repair the most, okay? Now, this is really interesting, okay? Because I'm gonna bring up a graph, and my boy Ricky's waiting on this one. Okay, this is actually a graph that dictates the serialization of Apple parts all the way back to the iPhone 4, okay? And this is a pretty grim graph. This is not a good thing to be seeing right now, okay? So if we look over here, we can see non-serialized, reprogrammable serials, and encrypted serials, okay? And I know that a lot of people have heard that the iPhone battery from the XR and above is displaying warning messages of non-genuine. You may even saw my video that I did about it. And it's causing customers to become concerned because they think you're giving them really, not even just counterfeit, but they think you're giving them crap. And uh, let's be real, you know, we're, we're all here trying to do a good job. You know what I mean? Um, so like I said, we're gonna go over this graph real quick just to kind of illustrate what's going on here. So in the beginning, in the iPhone 4, you know, I would say for the most part, everything was non-serialized. It wasn't even a worry. You didn't even think about it. You literally just swapped things out and you were good to go. You had 100 you know, uh, dummy phones in a drawer and you didn't have to worry about anything. Even at the board level, it, was, it wasn't even that big of a deal. And you know, as you jump into the S models, they're, they're usually about the same. It usually kind of parallels out um, every, every other model whenever you get a nice new one. That's when they start adding new things in. So the 4, the 4S are the same. The 5 and the 5S are the same, except we see a new color at the top here. It's an encrypted serial, okay? And we're gonna get into that here in a little bit. This encrypted serial, anybody know what that one was? Yes, yes, Touch ID. Um, for the sake of our security and our money, they decided to lock us out of this. And you know, I'm seeing smiles right now because I know, I know, I know people got some opinions about that and there's some good ones in here. Um, that's interesting. So we're going to move over to the 6 and the 6S, and we're still just sitting on our normal home buttons. They haven't really done anything crazy yet. Um, when we move to our 7, 8, same thing. We still got our regular Touch ID on there, you know, but there's something else that's kind of weird here. While the encrypted serials have stayed the same, we're starting to see reprogrammable serials really take a jump here, okay? They're seeing that when they did this, that nobody was going to complain about it, that they were going to get away with it, okay? So they started giving us more components that have programmable serials that, not that you necessarily have to change them, but if you don't, maybe you lose something. Maybe you lose True Tone. Maybe you lose something else. Now, when we look at these reprogrammable serials, we can't even change it without getting a warning message. But as we see, it pretty much took all these non-serialized ones down to nothing. And I've, I'm pretty sure that's the charge port. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's coming, you know what I mean? 
Um, but with that being said, we can see the encrypted serials here jump two and three. And you might be thinking, so what? It's only two or three items. What does that really mean? Well, when you're taking over the entire grid here with reprogrammable serials and they're all turning into encrypted serials, what does this graph tell you? Mm -hmm. it tells you we're in trouble. We're in big trouble, okay? Some of you guys, like raise your hand right now if you're a level two shop only. Everybody here level three? There's no way, I, I saw hands earlier. <laughs> well, moral of the story is if you're, if you're a screen swap shop, um, and again, there's nothing wrong with those kind of shops. You know, every, there's, gotta be, there's gotta be shops for everything. But if your shop is only doing screens, batteries, charging boards, non-micro soldering stuff, non-refurbishing stuff, this had better be a hell of a wake up call. You're in big trouble. Because as it stands, we're seeing a lot of this stuff come in and they're doing it with just updates on the firmware now, okay? So let's move forward. We can obviously see here that there is a, gra uh, a trend moving forward with the encrypted serials. So we need to talk a little bit about these encrypted serials and some of the other things, okay? Era 53, you guys remember this one. Basically, back in the day, we had, well, it was a six plus, wasn't it? Era 53 was a six plus. Uh, yeah, six, six, well, regardless. The deal was, when you swapped the home button with another home button, if you reset the phone, you basically bricked your phone. And once again, we see Apple being slick and sly. Who watched Guardians of the Galaxy? Anybody seen that one? I know everybody's seen some Guardians of the Galaxy. What's, what is that guy's name? The, the Drax? Is that, is that who it is? <laughs> He's got it right there. He knows exactly what I'm talking about. Literally, Apple is standing so smooth still right now. They are just moving extra slow, and nobody's complaining about it. But when it's too late, it's going to be absolutely too late. How long have you been standing there? An hour. An hour? Are you serious? I've mastered the ability of standing so incredibly still that I've become invisible to the eye. Air 53, I believe personally, and this is an opinion, but I think this was a test to see what they could get away with, okay? And they really didn't get away with it. There was a whole huge backlash. It didn't work out. And if we look, we, we literally had to wait. I like how this double jumps. We can see up here that the encrypted serials kind of stagnated for a little bit. They kind of waited. So if you're not looking at the data in front of you, it doesn't really make much sense, but when you have the data in front of you, when all this went down with Air 53, everything froze. They just started putting more reprogrammable serials in. It wasn't until the iPhone X, when everybody forgot about all that nonsense, because guess what, we don't have home buttons anymore, that they started being real sneaky with it again, okay? So what did we learn from Air 53? I personally think it's don't trust that they're not gonna lock you out of your stuff. Well, 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 and look what else we have right here. Looks like somebody did us a super solid and gave us some of the uh, internal information that we shouldn't have. But right there, it says, important. The battery display and camera procedures are not complete until the system configuration in AST2 has been ran successfully. You see that, guys? It's, it's a coming, and it's definitely verified, and you're in trouble. Okay, so now that we've seen the video where I kind of go over the entire situation, we can actually look at the new data, okay? That data was actually created, I think, the beginning of February, um, right as I was getting out of Shenzhen, and we are all the way at the end of the year now. It is October, so it's only been a couple short months. Let's look at the iPhone 12, and let's look at what the future might hold. Um, I'm gonna try and do this weatherman style. I don't know how well it's gonna go, but you know how, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm figuring it out here too. Um, there we go, okay. So, ba -da -da -da, this was the iPhone 11, which was the last phone that was released when I did this graph. And we could see that the iPhone 11 sitting right there on the 70% mark. So 30% of this, the phone's most common repairs are encrypted serials. Now this was bad because we could see and we had this feeling based on the uh, X, the excess and the 11 that we were kind of in this downward trend where we were getting more and more encrypted parts and we're going to be able to fix less and less. Well, the iPhone 12 is out now and we have new data. So I went ahead, I threw it in the, the chart here and let's see if I can get over there. Yeah. I don't know if you guys can tell, but there's a whole 20% more encrypted. Okay. 
Now, by 20%, it was front camera, back camera as separate components because that's kind of had it out in the original graph. But what that does tell us that they are basically on the same trajectory that they were on before, meaning that dun, 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 right here, the next iPhone. I don't know what the next iPhone is going to be called, but what I do know is that there is going to be another component that's serialized. And we are getting dangerously close to the fact that there might not be anything left that we can fix on iPhone. And you're thinking, well, Justin, no big deal. We'll move over to Samsung, whatever. Well, it's coming, it's happening. They're starting to do it with Samsung too. Share this video, like let everybody know. Send this to all your friends, you know what I mean? You gotta do something because pretty soon when you break your phone, and you go to Apple and you're like, I'm not paying that much money, I'm gonna go to a regular repair shop. And then you go to that regular repair shop and they're like, there's no options. The only option you have is basically us uh, joining the IRP program, giving away your soul, making almost next to nothing. So I don't know if Apple thinks this whole IRP thing is some kind of like legitimate thing that they're doing, but it's pretty clear to all of us that they're basically just trying to scam the system. You know what I mean? And they're trying to make it look like they're helping us, but they are absolutely not helping us. And Apple, if you want to talk to me, you know, privately, you're more than welcome to hit me up and let me know about your plans because right now your plans look pretty, they basically look like they're benefiting you alone. And I'm sorry, you are not going to monopolize the entire repair industry. That's not cool. So anyway, share this video, let everybody know what Apple's doing. And it's not just Apple. Samsung started to do it too. Um, Closing thoughts, let's think. I got one, okay? You guys might notice I bring up my buddy Ricky a lot. Well, let me tell you something. Ricky's got a lot of good thoughts in his head, right? And he, he mentioned something to me that was pretty interesting. Did you know that if you just reset a device, then sensitive data is gone, right? Including the financial tie information to your bank account with the fingerprint, right? So riddle me this, just like he riddled it to me. Why can't you just reset your phone and pair everything back up? If this is about security for you, a reset should fix that, right? Anyway, just food for thought. I love you guys. I see you next time. Hopefully we're here next year. And you know, you know, you know, don't forget, like, share, subscribe, and most importantly, so you know when I do something cool, notify, and I'll see you next time.